to graph G, again, we're going to look at the amplitude, period, and phase shift. So the amplitude, well, it's the coefficient out in front, which is just 1. So our cosine is not going to change in its height values. What isn't going to change is the both the period and the phase shift. So let's do the period. The normal period of cosine is 2 pi. And we want to divide that by the number in front of the theta, which is 2. So our period is now pi. It'll only take pi for us to start repeating ourselves, which means that the cosine function is going to happen much more quickly. The phase shift is going to be the back number, which is pi here, divided by the front number, which is 2. And my phase shift, since this is plus, will be minus down here. Or another way of saying it is a left shift of pi over 2. So let's graph this guy out. And we can do this in pieces, which makes it um, a little bit easier by using different colors. Okay, the normal cosine curve would start out at a height of 1, drops down, goes all the way down to the bottom, comes back up, and then comes back up to a height of 1 here. It's got this general curve to it that looks like this. So this is pi over 2. This guy over here, whoops, occurs at pi. This guy occurs at 3 pi over 2. And this guy up top, 2 pi. So the amplitude hasn't changed, so we, we maintain that height. The period and the phase shift. Let's do the um, let's do the phase shift next. The phase shift is going to move me to the left by pi over two. So let's extend this guy back. Here's a negative pi over two. So this initial point will move back to the left by pi over two. So I'm going to do that in yellow, like that. Now it only takes me until a length of pi to repeat myself. So this guy will repeat itself a length of pi away from where it originally was. So what I'm doing is I'm taking negative pi over 2 and I'm going to add pi to it. Okay, and that will that will tell me where the next so what I'm what I'm comparing here is this. This guy was at 0, this guy was at 2 pi. I want this guy to be the first one, so right here, and then there's going to be this guy is going to be moved back actually a little bit this way, right? Because um, because we're having this shrinking um, horizontally. So this is going to be negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi's over 2, which is positive pi over 2. So the next point is going to occur here at pi. Let's see if I can get rid of that. There we go. And that. So now I need to draw in between here. Now the question is, is where is it going to hit the axis and so forth? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, the first way is to take this length and divide it up into how many sections I want. So the normal, um, the normal cosine curve has one section between here and here, two sections between here and here. So here's the third section. And here's the fourth section. So if I want to divide this up, what I what I need to do is I need to split these guys up. Okay. And how I'm gonna do that, let's see here, how do I want to do that? Well, we can just go ahead and divide by four. So if I do that, the original function would have been 2 pi over 4, which would have said pi over 2. So it would have said every pi over 2, you're going to put a new dot, which is what we did. Our new function has, um, has a period of pi. So now we want to divide that by 4, and that will tell us how often we have to put a dot. So pi over 4. So every pi over 4, um, we need to put, put a value there. Okay, so what we're going to do, excuse me, yeah, this one's every every pi 
2 pi, and we divide that by 4. So we had a dot every pi over 2. This one's every pi. So this is going to be a dot every pi over 4. So where are my pi's over 4? Well, I move to the left by pi over 2, which means that there's going to be another one right here. Then the next dot is going to be at 0. And then the next dot is going to be at pi over 4, and the next dot is going to be at pi over 2. So the question is, is why did I put this guy over here? So let's check that again. Um, the, the period should be a pi, so negative pi over 2 plus pi should have been at pi over 2, and I stuck it at pi. That wasn't right. Okay, that looks much better. I just misgraphed that first point. I said pi over 2 for the first point, and I put it at pi. Okay, there we go. So that should be the new graph. And again, you can go ahead and verify that on your calculator. In fact, I'll show you on Maple that that's the correct graph. So notice that I'm between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 with that guy. So let's just delete all this. So let's plot the following. Let's plot the cosine of 2 times theta, or x, okay, um, between, for an x value, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And let's go from y equals negative 2 to 2. And there it is. There's the full the full graph between negative pi over two and pi over two. And if I go, whoops, if I look, let me close that down. And if I look between negative pi over two and pi over two, I have my whole graph. If you want to look as thin as what I've got there, let me just graph it out to two pi. And that'll show you if I go out to two pi here. Okay, so that's my, there's the, the thinness of that original graph. Okay, and if I want to, I can also graph the cosine function along with this. Like this, and let's make the cosine, um, the cosine function be red, just the original cosine function, the parent graph. did I do? Oh, I see it. Right. I need to delete this one. Put one in here. There we go. Here's the original cosine in red. And here's the new blue function. And remember that this guy right here, let's pull back up into this. This guy right here will end up repeating himself over and over again. So you're going to see this guy come back down, so on and so forth, and wave between.